Now just imagine you're sitting around the table. And each of the disciples says, Lord, am I the one? And then Judas says, Rabbi, am I the one? Rabbi is definitely a term of respect, but is a far cry from king. Now imagine today that there are many, too many people, just like Judas, respectfully acknowledging that Jesus is teacher. I don't know if you're aware, but Muslims respect Jesus as a teacher. That's not going to save them. Jesus is Lord. He gave his life to save you and to make you one of his own. When we partake in the Lord's Supper, we are acknowledging his lordship. God promised under this new covenant to write his words in our minds and hearts. Promise to be our God, to never remember our sins, to remove our sins as far as the east is from the west. The blood of Christ was shed for all sin for all time. It was given to us who live without hope, without a relationship with God. In Hebrews 10.10, he reminds us, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ. Has the blood of Christ brought you near? To God. In Romans 3, Paul wrote, For God presented Jesus Christ as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe. Have you been clothed with Christ? In Romans 6, he says, Or have you forgotten? When we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death. For we died and we were buried by, with Christ through baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live this new life. Memories are to guide our actions and to motivate us. And I believe this is why Jesus Christ gave us the Lord's Supper. He knew that without it, we would forget what he has done for us. I don't know about you, but I need to be reminded that I was once lost, excluded from God's family, without hope and without God. But now, in Christ Jesus, I have been brought near to him by the blood of my Savior. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jesus.